Duke Blue Devils are with us. Head coach Mike Krzyzewski, Grayson Allen, and Marvin Bagley III represent Duke. We're going to ask Mike to start off with a statement on the game. Then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen from Duke. Mike, please. Yeah, well, you know, it's an honor to play in this game. Uh, they have a storied program, and so do we. And I think the game showed that. Uh, I think both teams were deserving of winning, and that's why it came down to a possession right at the end of the game and, and went into overtime. Uh, you know, I want to congratulate Kansas. They're superb, uh, superbly coached, and you know, they're, they're as quick a team as we've played all year. And, uh, um, and I want to congratulate my guys. You know, they've gotten better throughout and they played winning basketball uh, today and I feel badly for them because um, I thought they were deserving of winning too and uh, when you have a great game you usually have two teams that are deserving of winning but only one wins and uh, so uh, again congratulations to them. First questions right here thank you. Uh, for Marvin and Grayson can you talk about the emotions and, and what's going on through your mind right now? Marvin, first, please. <coughs> no, um, it hurts. Um, you know, we we've been through a lot this year as a team, um, and we gotten closer throughout the year. And you know, to make it this far, uh, to have a chance at winning it and, and moving on, um, and, and not being able to do it, it, it hurts a lot. And and you never want to lose, you know, and, um, especially with this team. We got a lot of competitors on this team, and, and this feeling is not is not the best feeling. So, uh, um, we played a great team tonight, and um, they just got it done. Oh uh, yeah, it hurts, like you said. Um, we wanted to be the team at the end of the year, winning, and I mean, no one wants to end with a loss like that. It's it's so abrupt. I mean, the end of the game comes and it's over and so it hurts it's it's not you can't say much more than that Eric, Eric Olson with the Associated Press Grayson uh, could you just kind of take us through the the last shot there in regulation that came so close to going in but didn't uh, it came really close to going in it didn't uh, you know, I was trying to drive right, cut me off, went back left, and uh, their big stepped up to help, and you know, I had to get a shot up over him, and, and tried to bank it in, and it was right there, rolled out. In the back, thank you. Mike, can you describe the uh, the last play of regulation, what you wanted to see, and and how your guys had to respond to that in overtime? Yeah, it's the same thing we did to take the lead. Yeah, you know, where you. I didn't want to call a timeout because that play was working. And we went to the free throw line a few times, and also it gave Marvin a chance if they didn't double team him to get the ball inside. And so, you know, I'm, I'm okay with, I mean, it, it almost went in. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one of our really good players, I wanted either Grayson to get it or if we could, post Marvin, but they, they doubled and triple teamed him so much. And it, uh, you know, it's in and out. So it, that's uh, one of the tough things. But I thought our guys did a good job with it. Kate Carlson, South Boston News Record for Coach. Uh, you know, Wendell Carter gets the three fouls in the first half, uh, and then he was playing, playing in foul trouble in the second half. What challenges does that present to you guys with Wendell being in foul trouble all night? Well, you know, it's the way the game is. You know, obviously, you have a a kid that's averaged a double double the whole year, um, and he just wasn't able to play his game. I'm not blaming the referees or anything, but when you're, it just it's disruptive, and and he, you know, I thought Marquis helped us for a little bit, and then Javin did a really good job, but. Uh, you know, right towards the end, when we got the ball to Wendell a couple times, you know, he, you know, Grayson was able to hit him because they're, you know, one thing throughout the game, they were just, anytime, you know, Marvin 
either had the ball or before he got the ball, they're just smothering him. It was very difficult to get him the ball. And then Wendell responded. And usually, you know, if he's in the ball game, they work well off one another. And uh, uh, so it's something different, you know, but that's the way the game is. But, it, you know, obviously it hurts us. <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd rather have him in the game for 30 something minutes. Right side, gentlemen. Just one for Grayson. Uh, I guess this weekend didn't seem like the shot was, you know, going at a high clip, obviously. But, I mean, was the feel just off? or And how frustrating was it at that point when you realize the looks you probably would take every day, but the result wasn't what you wanted? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. I still shoot the same shots. Um, expect them to go in. A lot of them hit the rim twice, um, bounced around. But uh, I mean, I'm still gonna take the open shots. That's that's our offense. Uh, it's a Duke shot when I take an open three, and uh, obviously I'm disappointed they didn't go in. Uh, you know, I I would have liked to have make them, but it's not how it goes all the time. Jeff Goodman with ESPN. Uh, Mike Grayson's obviously had a pretty darn good career up and down a little bit over the four years. What what does he mean to you? And what is his do career? Yeah, maybe? well, his his career has been up, you know, uh, you know, a little injury plagued, especially his junior year. But uh, you know, he's a two thousand point scorer. You know, he's a national champion. He's you know been our leader this year. You know, he's one of the outstanding players to have ever played in our program, and you know, he did a great job of interacting with this young group and help the young group grow. And uh, I especially thought the relationship that uh, he had has, has with Marvin was the key, you know, for us getting as good as we, we were. And, uh, you know, you're a shot away, you know, a roll away from being in the Final Four, and so much of it has to do with their relationship and his, and his leadership. Right here on the left before uh, the next question, just a note that the Duke locker room will close at 7.15 sharp. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is from Marvin Eric Olson with the, uh, with the AP. Uh, like Coach just said, uh, Grayson has meant a, a great deal to you. Could you kind of uh, give us your take on that, just what Grayson has meant to you in, in your year here? Um, uh, to kind of go off what Coach um, just said, uh, you know, I came in, uh, kind of late in the beginning of the year. Um, I wasn't here in the summer. And, um, you know, when I got here, you know, Grayson was the one, you know, kind of talking to me about a lot of the, like, about how things go around, um, you know, how the workouts are, you know, just, just showing me different, different things and just telling me his experiences that he's, um, uh, he's experienced while he's, he is here as well. So, uh, um, and not only me, he's been doing that to everybody and, um, I think that's why, you know, we built this relationship uh, with everyone and, and how we got so close, especially coming into March and how we how we wanted to fight and, and try to win every every single game. So, um, you know, Grayson was a was a big part of us um, getting this far. Um, we we try to follow him and um, you know, and it hurts that you know, that we couldn't get it done for him. We have four minutes to go. We have two questions up. Go, please. Uh, for coaching Grayson, Malik Newman went for uh, 32 points tonight. What did he do so well to where it was hard to stop him defensively? Grayson, first, please. Uh, well, he, he made a, a lot of tough shots and a lot of timely shots for them. Um, you know, a lot of them, uh, obviously the game was close the whole game, but, you know, a lot of them it just felt like right when we felt like we were about to get a run, he, he hit one. Um, and so it was tough, you know, and he obviously did a really great job attacking the basket and fouled, shooting 12 free throws. Um, so when you got your three-point shot going and that going, it's tough to defend. Yeah, well, he's, he's been their hottest player. So he basically continued to do what he does. But uh, there are four perimeter players. It, it, it's very difficult to concentrate on stopping one because Graham in the first half was – the guy, and uh, and that's that's why they're as good as they are. You know, they got four really good options, and um, and but he's 
he's been really hot. He, he's been playing at, a, at a, uh, a, an extremely high level, and he did that especially in the second half. He's a good player. You know, he's a good, great kid, and he's a good player. Uh, for Marvin, what were some of the most important lessons you learned this year? Um, I learned a lot of a lot of things. Um, you know, not only you know on the court, but off the court, uh, and seeing the amount of work that has to be put into this. Uh, you know, preparation-wise, studying um, the teams that we played all year. Um, you know, I just learned how to, you know, take care of my body. You know, just a lot of a lot of small things that I kind of didn't really know about, you know, coming into college and, you know, just this year, you know, it helped me a lot. And, uh, you know, I just thank, you know, everybody, man, for just allowing me to be myself and, uh, you know, just be a part of something so special. And, um, you know, like I said before, it hurts that we, we couldn't go, couldn't go far further than we, what we did. And, um, but um, you know I'm still proud of, of what we what we did this year, and uh, we just gotta keep our heads up. Yeah, time for one more question on the right hand side. Thank you. Uh, for Grayson, I guess what's gonna stand out to you when you look back on your career, even though it didn't end the senior year how you wanted it to? What are you gonna remember most about your time at Duke? Uh, not, not, not just one thing. Um, you know, obviously there's that big moment starting off freshman year with a national championship win and how much joy that brings. Um, but I'm, I'm so happy. Um, so happy I made that choice to come here. So happy that, that they asked me to, they asked me to come here, gave me a scholarship. Um, I've learned so much in my four years here. Um, coming out a completely different person and, and for the better. Um, and the relationships I've built with coach, the coaches, um, some of my teammates who are guys I call my brothers now, um, those, will, those will last for a really long time. And um, that's, that's one of the things I'll cherish because those, those don't go away. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Best of luck in the future. Thank you. Okay, a couple of things. The uh, media workroom, basically the uh, working area in the building will be open till 11 o'clock tonight instead of 10.30. 11 o'clock, we'll uh, have the media workroom open. I've just been handed the uh, Midwest Region All Tournament Team. This will probably be distributed shortly. Uh, Malik Newman is the most outstanding player from Kansas. 
Trevon Duval from Duke is on it, Gabe DeVoe of Clemson, Marvin Bagley III from Duke, Devontae Graham from Kansas, Gary Trent Jr. from Duke. So Gabe DeVoe of Clemson, Duval, Bagley, and Trent from Duke, Graham and Newman from Kansas. Newman is the most outstanding player. More notes on Kansas. Uh, they advanced to the Final Four for the 15th time in program history. This marks the 38th time a school from the Big 12 Conference has advanced to the Final Four, including the second time in the last three years, Oklahoma, 2016. The victory by Kansas, coupled with number one seed Villanova winning the East Regional, means this will mark the 22nd time that two number ones have advanced to the Final Four, including the second straight year. Second straight year, we've had two number ones in the Final Four. Jayhawks have now won seven straight, improved to 31 and seven overall. This third straight season that Kansas has won 31 or more games, and the ninth time in 15 years under coach Bill Self. Kansas now has a 7-1 record in games played in Omaha, in this building. Bill Self will be making his third trip to the Final Four. He's 37 and 13 at Kansas, the most NCAA tournament wins ever by a coach at that school. He's now three and seven in the Elite Eight. V. Makiluk Malik Newman. Devontae Graham represent the student body at Kansas. Head coach Bill Self is also here. And we will ask him to start off with a statement and then we'll go to questions for all four gentlemen from Kansas. This is a 15 minute session max. Bill, please. Well, you know, obviously I don't, I don't think I could be or we could be more excited or more proud than what we are right now not only going to San Antonio, but the way that we did it, you know, uh, beating uh, uh, an historic program, maybe the greatest college basketball coach of all time and, and uh, 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 such a talented roster and, and to, 
to do it in a way that we haven't done it all year long. You know, we haven't we haven't beat anybody on the glass all year long. We win the rebounding battle by 15 or whatever today. So I I couldn't be happier or more proud and 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 certainly uh, very proud to be a part of that game. That was an epic game that that uh, one of the best ones, if not the best, that I've ever been a part of. First questions right here. Thank you. John Natal with the Omaha World Herald. Yeah, Devontae, just the final six minutes of the game plus overtime, you guys were both trading baskets. And I think you kind of, I would imagine, feel the tension. Just talk us through what was that like, um, you know, that stage and, and having to perform in that moment? Uh, you know, that's what you come here for, to play in those in those moments. And uh, all I kept telling the, uh, the guys was player make plays. So uh, I knew we was going to make plays down the stretch and we've been in plenty of situations like that and uh, it was fun going back and forth like that and uh, it was it was just a great lead eight, eight game. I'm Mark Tracy from the New York Times for the players uh, you know I think you guys probably had faced a zone or two before this year but you know this is still a new thing it seemed at some point that it clicked that you guys figured out kind of how to get especially get Malik open shots um, was there a moment where it clicked? Did you guys kind of figure something out, or did you always kind of have a sense of how to attack it? It's V, you start off, and then we'll come to Malik, and then Devontae. Yeah, I would say we just always attack. Uh, and, uh, you know, today Malik was open a lot of times, and, uh, you know, he was 48% from three-point line, I guess. And, uh, you know, he shot, it, he shot it great today. Everybody shot it good. Everybody attacked the zone. Uh, we, were, uh, we were finding their weaknesses in the middle of the zone, lobs, so I think it, uh, it played out well. Uh, I mean, just to, just to pick it back on what Svee said, um, I mean, Coach just told us just keep attacking the zone. And uh, they was gapping it so much that, you know, Coach just said if, if we was able to uh, get paint touches, then the three-point line to open up. And, um, I mean, I think LeJur, he did a great job in the middle of, of um, being active in the zone. And we was able to, to get a lot, of shots, a lot of shots in the corner, which really opened up the, the, penetration, the penetration for us. Yeah. Uh basically what they said and uh, we knew that we could get the ball flat because of how high they played up and uh, we were just trying to you know get Legere the ball in the middle and tell, told him to go make plays and uh, got a couple of lobs and, and easy baskets like that. Uh, Zach Braziller, your post. Uh, Bill, just talk about Svee's game. I mean he, he's guarding Bagley for so much of it. He hits the big three with 25 seconds left. I mean it seemed like he that's a, obviously an incredibly tough role to put someone his size in to guard a, a guy like Bagley. What, what did you just think of his overall, <coughs> of his overall game? I, I think that, you know, power versus power, you know, two, 205 pounds over there. Uh, I, I, I thought his defense was unbelievable. I, I, I really thought Malik's defense on Grayson was terrific too. But, but Svee, to me, uh, things that we haven't really worked on, you know, butt front and two feet in front, you know, th things uh, – uh, we, tr we started the game trapping with the point, and then Duvall hurt us. And so, uh, uh, but he, he kept, you know, he, he didn't keep him off the glass. He still had 10 boards, but, but for him to only get four offensive rebounds when, when, when we got a guard guarding him, and uh, I, I, thought, I thought he was terrific. And he got a huge steal late uh, uh, when they ran a ball screen and tried to throw the ball back. But, but uh, everybody played, everybody contributed, but certainly even though Malik scored a lot of points, I don't know that anybody had a better game than what Svee had. Uh, yeah, Sam Mellinger with the Kansas City Stars. Svee, I actually wanted to ask you exactly about that. What was that like guarding Bagley in the post? Do you have much experience guarding a, a big, talented guy like that? And I was also curious, Malik, your perspective on that, on, on Svee guarding the big guy. Yes, to you, bro. Oh, I mean, I, I thought he did a great job. Uh, like Coach said, I mean, he, he was only able to give uh, four rebound, four offensive rebounds. And coming into the game, we knew him and Wendell got like 40% of their shots back. So, um, I mean, I think Svee, he did a great job of, of battling down low and um, just being tough down there, being tough and strapping. I mean, just not letting him have his way. Svee, how about uh, you? Yeah, I would just I would just say uh, all the time he was in the core, I was just always with him, you know, just pushing him a little bit so he can feel me every time. Don't let him go everywhere, like, without me actually just put my hand on my body on him so he can get tired and stuff. And I was just doing it the whole game, so, you know, he, do, he doesn't feel, like, free going around the court. We're here, we're in the back row, and then two on this side. Go, please.
Yeah, uh, Jake Trotter with ESPN. Svi, you had missed a couple of wide open threes there you know, in the closing minutes. What's going through your mind as you step up there with, with 26 seconds to go? Oh, man, everybody telling me keep shooting. You know, DT, after the last one I missed wide open, DT said, man, just keep shooting the ball. And like two next possessions, you know, he passed me the ball. I was thinking about passing to a corner, but uh, I think one, one day I just gapped it, so I just shot the ball and he went in. Chris Lazarin with Kansas Alumni. Devontae, uh, as a senior team leader, could you offer us a big picture perspective as Coach did to open this, um, advancing to the Final Four against Duke, um, another big KU Duke game, and you getting your Final Four against Duke? Uh, <clears throat> it's just a great, great feeling uh, for us, for the fans, uh, just everything that we've been through this year, all the ups and downs, and, you know, the boot camp and everything that we've been through, you know, we, we do it for, for moments like this. And uh, it's just special, you know, especially getting here this same game last two years and losing it, uh, you know, it's just getting over that hump and it, it just feels unbelievable. Uh, this is for Bill, I guess. When uh, Grayson let that shot go at the end of regulation, did time stand still for you? It, it did. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Malik, defended it perfectly, but he still got it off the backboard and kind of spun around. It looked like he had a chance to fall in. And fortunately, when it came off, the, you know, it was at zero, so there was no time for any rebound. But uh, yeah, we were fortunate, you know, because, you know, he's, they put the ball in his hands late to go make some plays, and, but Malik defended it perfectly. And, and uh, I think that stop did give us some confidence, you know, going in, no question, going into overtime guarding them. Down on the right-hand side. John Mabry with the Topeka Capital Journal. Malik, can you talk about um, if you had any, you obviously uh, came through in, in this one, but what it meant for the two guys on each side of you to, to get to San Antonio? Um, I mean, it, it meant a lot. Um, you know, these guys, they, they've they been here plenty of times. And like Coach always said at the beginning of the year, you know, we they've been knocking on the door uh, the last two years. So, uh, I mean, it, it just means everything to to see these guys be happy going to San Antonio. And um, I mean, you know, that's this, this basically what we was playing for, uh, you know, to, to help these guys get over their hump. And um, I'm just glad that, that I was able to contribute in a good way uh, to help these guys. And I mean, man, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for any better leaders than these two guys. We have seven minutes to go. We have two questions up. Start here. Uh, Zach was in the New York Post for SV at Devante. I think it was maybe about 15 seconds left when they started fouling. And you kind of knew you guys had the win. And, you know, this, you guys obviously had huge smiles on your faces. What, can you describe what that emotion was like after getting to this point and, you know, being heartbroken to, to get back here and, as seniors and to break through? Devontae, first, please. Uh, it's hard to describe, man. Uh, you know, the last two years, you know, it's just – just like you said, it's heartbreaking, and uh, you know you come back and you you get another shot at it again, and you lose again, and then you come back and you're in the same game, and, and uh, yesterday and all the media and stuff is is all about how you're gonna get over the hump in the last two years, this and that. So uh, you think about it all the time, and uh, you know we knew we had the game wrapped up. All we had to do is make a couple of free throws. We just came and, and hugged each other and just said, you know, we love each other and happy that uh, we could get over that hump. Yes, Sveez, next. Uh, yeah, like at the end, we knew we were coming close to the Final Four, and, you know, just me and Devontae and uh, Malik and LeGerald, uh, you know, when somebody else shooting free throws, we just stayed there and said, man, we're just coming closer, just got to finish the job right, and, uh, you know, we finished it good, and uh, we know everybody can shoot free throws. So whoever throw it in, if they're going to foul, we're going to make them shots. Coach Doug Duda, KXPN Radio. You talked about actually winning the rebounding battle, and you did that without Udoka on the floor most of the basketball game. Can you expound on how you were able to do that and maybe how the game changed because Duke finally took the lead when he fouled out? Yeah, I, I, well, Silvio did a great job of, of uh, you know, filling the void. You know, even though he didn't score much, uh, uh, he, he, he was a force defensively, and, and uh, you know, he obviously was great on the glass. But, you know, the, the way that we would out-rebound Duke is strictly by committee and, and scrap and, you know, you have Devontae, uh, uh, I think Devontae gets six, and uh, Malik gets seven, and, uh, and, and Sfi gets uh, ten. So, that, that, I mean, that's a lot of rebounds for our guards. If you, I mean, if you add them up, that's 16, that's 23. 
and, and, and the other thing is when you look at their rebounds, they got 32, but eight of them were off deflections out of bounds. So we were, they only got 24 rebounds when, when, when they actually secured it. So, you know, even though they may have got some, 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 some rebounds by numbers, it was like that, that, that those out of bounds plays didn't allow them to get in transition. Those out of bounds plays didn't allow them to get second chance points. So that was, that was the best we've done on the glass all year long and the, and the most dominant we've been without question. We've really labored in that area, but today we were terrific. Five minutes to go, three questions are up, go. John Neatel with the Omaha World Herald. Uh, Bill Devonte described that game as fun. It was fun for us. Was it fun for you? How, how yeah, that was. That, I told the guys. I said, I hope you guys can have as much enjoy playing the game today as I will coaching it. And and I meant that. I, I mean, you know, so, so many times when 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 you when you're kind of the the favorite uh, throughout the season, you know, the wins are relief as opposed to as much fun and and and. Uh, and today was one of those games I felt like, I don't know how they felt like, I, I felt like that was one of those deals. No matter what happened today, it was going to be disappointing if you don't win, but you're just proud to be a part of that game, proud to be a part of this. That's something that's, that's, that's bigger than just individuals. I mean, it's Kansas and Duke. We didn't even talk about going to the Final Four. All we talked about was playing Duke. And, and I, I do think playing Duke in that game helped us, uh, uh, playing, playing a school uh, uh, of uh, – of that caliber and, and program of that caliber. So uh, I, it was fun. It was fun to be a part of that. I would be proud to have coached in that game, even if the outcome was, was different. Uh, but certainly with the way the outcome turned out, it made it, it made as, as special a game as I've ever been a part of, with the exception of one. Coach, would you have seen this trip to the Final Four as being even possible a couple of months ago? Uh, no, I, we, we didn't even know who was going to finish the season with our roster a couple of months ago. I mean, uh, we, we, we were uh, – we had some hard lessons to learn, and, and uh, I had to do a better job of motivating and coaching and, and, and pushing the right buttons. Uh, uh, but I, I didn't think that we were a very – we were winning, but I didn't think we were a very good team even though we were winning. And sometimes when you win, that camouflage is what you don't do well. And then when we got exposed – uh, 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 visually and, and, and by losses, I, I think that, that that helped us in the long run and changed our mindset. Zach Rizzo, DR Post. Svi, what, when did you know you were going to be, be guarding Bagley a lot of the game? What did you kind of find? Did you kind of think when Duke won that would be the task, or did you kind of find out the next day? And what was your reaction when you kind of realized that? Oh. Uh, I mean, I got a guard, and that's what it is, you know, every game. Uh, you know, when oh, when? Yeah, when? Oh, uh. When they won. Yeah, when they won. Like, I, I knew because I'm always playing the four, so I'm he, probably going to go. He's our him. power forward defensively. Yeah, he he has guard. been all year, so he, he, he knows that's would be his matchup. Yeah, big guard. <laughs> uh, I mean, just, you know, next game, next opponent, and, you know, next player who I got a guard. So that's, that's about it. Malik, when you set out your transfer year and going through all the tough workouts and stuff, did you picture a moment like this to, to motivate you? Did you think something like this was was coming? Uh, most definitely, uh, most definitely. I mean, like even like Coach said, uh, you know, we had a lot of a lot of hard lessons early in the season. Uh, we had some tough losses and things like that. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, this 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 is why you come to Kansas uh, to be in games like this, to to be in moments like this. And um, I mean, I, I just knew that the guys that was beside me. Um, I knew those guys, they, they cared, they worked hard each and every day. Uh, they loved one another. So, um, I mean, I, I had no question that, you know, that we can get to this, to this moment. We're going to take these two questions, and that'll be it right here first. Coach, and if any of the players want to chime in, how, how big of a factor edge was experience? You, know, you guys have been here twice before. They're, besides Grace and Allen, they're key guys. This was the first Elite Eight game, obviously, for them. I, I can't speak to them. I, I thought, you know, they they only turned it over 11 times. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they made their free throws for the most part. I I didn't think that that uh, there was anything that they did that that uh, showed inexperience. To be honest with you, uh, I thought there's a lot of things that we did to show experience. So, uh, you know, that was a heavyweight fight. Uh, uh, you know, they, they they staggered us, but we found a way to come back. We staggered them a few times. Uh, uh, but the biggest thing I think the experience sh showed was when things weren't going right, we didn't panic. Uh, and, and we had more opportunities to panic than they did 
at, at, for the most part because they led the majority of the game. But, but the only bad stretch I think that we had, if I remember right, we, we left the timeout up five, and next thing you know, they go up like one or two with about six left or, or something like that. But, but other than that, I mean, we didn't have a bad stretch the, the entire game for the most part. Uh, uh, and even we had 18 turnovers. I bet you if you go back and look at the 18 turnovers, I bet you eight were where we got the ball exactly where we wanted to get it and just didn't make a play. But uh, uh, we wouldn't have won the game without experience, but I, I'm, I, I think talent uh, uh, was as much of anything in us winning that game today. Final question. John Natal, Omaha World Herald. Uh, Bill, at the end of the game, I think I saw you just sort of raise your fists and maybe scream a little bit. <laughs> what was going through your mind then? Well, you know, I'm, these guys know. I, I try not to be too emotional. I'm not the most emotional guy, but sometimes, you know, you can just be overcome with it. And, and uh, at, at that moment, I was. I mean, I'm so I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for, for our staff and, and, and our school and, you know, all that stuff. But I'm more happy for these guys because they've sacrificed so much and haven't experienced what the very best of college basketball is all about. And, and you think about it, hey, in, in, in their careers, all we've been is the, the number one overall seed, the number two overall seed, and the number three overall seed, and haven't gotten to a final four. So you know, that means that these guys have, have done so well to put us, us in a position, but we hadn't kicked the door in yet. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm, I mean, I'm happy for us, staff, school, and everything. But I, I'm more happy for these guys. And, and uh, because uh, they deserve to experience what the best of college basketball is, and that'll be what takes place uh, Saturday and Monday. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank and you. Congratulations.